So today, or for my future watchers, on November 8th this morning, there was a lunar eclipse. A lunar eclipse is when the Earth's moon enters the Earth's shadow, and thus, when in totality, the moon turns a blood red. This is because that the wavelengths from the sun pass through the lengthy Earth's atmosphere, the blue wavelengths get scattered, and the red wavelengths are the ones that come out, thus coloring the moon red. Now, from the lunar eclipse, we can actually calculate the diameter of the moon, and by extension, how far the moon is away from the Earth. However, one thing to note is that the Earth's shadow is divided into two parts, the penumbra and the umbra. The umbra is the actual black part of the shadow that causes the moon to be blocked out, whereas the umbra simply causes a shade on the moon but doesn't completely block it out. That also means that the Earth's umbra is slanted due to the way shadows work. So this is difficult when calculating the diameter of the moon. Now, one assumption we're going to make is that the total of the Earth's shadow, the umbra and the penumbra, is a cylinder, meaning diameter of the Earth's shadow is equal to that of the Earth. The next assumption is that the gray bits are exactly one moon diameter in length total, meaning the first part of the umbra is half a moon diameter and the second part of the umbra is also half a moon diameter. Thus, the equation for the distance of Earth's shadow across in terms of moon diameters is as follows. The number of moon diameters, m, which is what we're trying to find, plus one extra moon diameter due to the distance the moon has to cross through the penumbra equals the diameter of the Earth. One clever way to find how many moon diameters fit across Earth's umbra is by measuring the time the moon takes to pass Earth's umbra. Next, we must find out how long the moon takes to go one moon diameter in length as seen from Earth. The diameter of the moon in terms of degrees as seen from Earth is one half degrees. This is known as the angular diameter. The next thing to note is that every 24 hours, the moon moves 13 and a third degrees. With this ratio, we can proceed with our calculations. To find the number of moon diameters that it takes for the moon to traverse 24 hours is a simple calculation involving dimensional analysis. 13 and one third degrees over 24 hours divided by one half degrees per one moon diameter should be the rate of moon diameters per hour. When we divide the time it takes for the moon to cross the Earth's shadow in terms of uh, how we see it on Earth, we get this equation where the time of the eclipse or the time in the Earth's umbra divided by 13 and the third divided by 24 all over that divided by one half equals the number of moon diameters fitting in Earth's umbra. So the next issue is to calculate what exactly that time is. Okay, so here are the two established equations. The first one telling the moon diameters fitting inside the Earth's diameter, and the second one describing the time of the moon in Earth's umbra to how many moon diameters that would be. Now, if we plug in the second equation into the first one and then rearrange it, we can uh, find the uh, moon diameter in terms of Earth's diameter and time. Now, the Earth's diameter is given for you, and we can calculate it separately, but that's a topic for a different video. Now, let's watch the eclipse. If you look up, you can see the moon being eclipsed by the Earth's shadow. You can see the umbra. It's actually a full moon, but the shadow is blocking some of the moon. Okay, here's a better shot of the moon. It's very red because of the red light that's hitting it, and that's because the moon is fully in the Earth's umbra. However, that's not the middle 
of the Earth's shadow that the moon is in, it's that we have to wait 30 minutes to get to that point. However, it is such a beautiful sight. Also, notice how I said that the maximum part of the eclipse will be in 30 minutes. In reality, I couldn't check when the eclipse ended because the moon already was below the horizon. Got this fact from checking the almanac. However, I don't want to check the almanac again because it defeats the spirit of this video and its whole point. This means I can estimate how long the moon was in Earth's umbra. I can deduce that the maximum part of the eclipse is around 6 o'clock a.m., and that the moon started first entering Earth's umbra around uh, 4.16, the last I saw it. So, if we find that time difference and multiply it by 2, that's how long the moon stayed in the umbra. This means that the moon was in Earth's umbra for about 3 hours and 28 minutes. So, we calculated our time, 3.4667 hours. If we plug it into the established equation for both miles and kilometers, we see that the moon's diameter, as we calculated, is 1921.21 miles or 3092.11 kilometers. The real value is 2159.1 miles, uh, which is uh, 3474.8 kilometers, which is about a 11% error. So we did good, but we could do better. Maybe watch the eclipse completely. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe.